three, two, one. We'd like to welcome you to another edition of Grok Talk, brought to you by New Hampshire's leading conservative blog site, GraniteGrok.com. We are your fear, extremist, right-wing, hard-charging, gun-toting, opinionated, outspoken, rabble-rousing, letter-writing, radio, microphone-stomping, conservatives, and rational libertarians. So get ready for more news and opinion you could only get from GraniteGrok.com. Grok Talk. Hey there. Hey there, welcome to Grog Talk. Steve McDonald here with Mike Rogers, Skip Murphy, Max Abramson's en route. Parking. Somewhere. Parking. Parking. Parking in Concord. Nightmare parking in Concord. The nightmare on Main Street. Oh, oh, oh we, sorry. There we go. Which is still ongoing because they're still ongoing. Re- uh, deconstructing it. Yeah. Well, actually, they're, they are starting to put it back together again. They are starting to pave in front of this Capitol building and moving their way further southward. But I'll tell you, I think uh, Rick's rant of a couple of weeks ago last week yeah perfect it was was absolutely i was two weeks ago you're right yeah two weeks ago in grok talk he uh we posted it up it uh it was good yes very good lousy situation even the new the improvements are not improvements let's put it that way yeah so uh we're going to be talking about veto override bills hopefully as soon as he uh, gets here the uh, two that i'm aware of or the two things that i'm aware of that need need attention specifically uh, three things actually SB 116 which is the constitutional carry bill uh, HB 603 which is uh, the uh, right to opt out of assessments and the budget which the governor vetoed so those are the three that I'm familiar with I know mm-hmm. there's a couple more and uh, Max has just arrived to tell us what they are so uh, we're gonna get into that in a minute Remind you that you can listen to this and past programs on Spreaker, Stitcher, iTunes, TuneIn, iHeart, Radio, YouTube, and Ustream. And please check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. Just look for Granite Rock. And of course, GraniteRock.com, where all the greatest conservative blogging occurs in the state of New Hampshire. It's just my humble opinion. But uh, i got to see which headset you're on there, sir. Are you on this one? Testing. You are. Okay. Well, welcome to the show. I mentioned three. HP603. Uh, the budget in SB 116. Um, we can do them in any order you want, uh, whatever you want to go. Just start, and we'll just try to make sure we get through all six. <laughs> well, thanks for having me on. Um, I, I've been going through Maggie Hassan's uh, veto responses. They're always entertaining, but they're always condescending. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely put. Well, if you if you're gonna lie, at least tell a convincing lie, and. One of the things I notice about her veto messages is not only are they dishonest, they assume that you're stupid, that you didn't read the bill, and I do read the bills, and I happen to go back through some of these bills and read the text of them. Republican bills are usually about one or two sentences. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, they are. I'm not trying to make fun of anyone, but... Uh, they should be short and understandable. Th- and they are very short, and they are very understandable. Um but usually I think of a bill as being something like a page or two pages. Republican bills are usually about a sentence or two. Yeah, unless there's like a, a sentence or two change in a, a large existing RSA and you have right. to trundle through the whole thing. And You know, we had a bill earlier this year that only changed one word. It changed the word and to or. And the uh, Health and Human difference. Services didn't pass it. Well, Injunction, it was medical... It was medical marijuana. If you have patients who are on medical marijuana, you had to, right now you have to have the symptoms of certain diseases and a diagnosis for those diseases. It can't just be symptoms or the disease. Well, if you take the same symptoms of two different doctors, one doctor might give you a different diagnosis. If that diagnosis isn't on the list, now you can no longer take medical marijuana. Just, just the change of one word, now you're on pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals have side effects, so t- sometimes you take one pharmaceutical. Now you need to take something else to deal with the side effects for that. Now you need to take something else to deal with the side effects for that. Eventually, yep. you're on a shoebox full of medications. I uh, yep. So I have. War. All right, so let's talk about veto override day. House bill. That's Wednesday. There be going to be quite a few people coming. I've had quite a few uh, parents concerned about HB 603, um, but the first one is. Along the same lines, House Bill 332. Of course, we're very strong supporters of parental rights, and that's one of the reasons that I went up there to the State House, one of the reasons I try to get more people involved. Um, 
Hassan, uh, so here's what House Bill 332 does. It simply says that if, a, if the school is going to have sexually oriented explicit, or et cetera, explicit material that they have to provide two weeks notice to the parents so the parents can come in, take a look at the material, make sure it's not obscene or objectionable. And I thought this was a very simple, straightforward bill. I thought it would just fly right through flew right through the committee, went right through the House, went right through the Senate. We only had Democrats voting against it, of course. It's, it's, it's just a very simple bill. Parents find something objectionable, they should have the right to pull their kid out of the class. And this one simply says it just provides notice. That's it. The law already says you can pull your child out of that class for some alternative material, but in this particular case in New Hampshire, you don't get notice. You don't get notified. Parents are finding out after the fact what's in some And we know how that books. works. Yeah. You remember the... the Guilford. Yeah, we, we've got a list. Of and the uh, father in Bedford who was arrested for bringing up, you know, his, these kids, some of them are 10 years old, they're getting exposed to some of this stuff. So here's what Hassan says. House Bill 332 would be an impediment to an adaptable learning environment, which is critical to helping our students develop the skills and critical thinking necessary for success in the 21st century economy. The current, this is what she says, current law allow, uh, requires school districts to adopt a policy allowing an exception to specific course material based on a parent's or legal guardian's determination that the material is objectionable. And that, that part is true. But the other problem is, if the parents don't know ahead of time, they don't know what material is coming down the pike that is going to be objectionable. Oh, absolutely so, right. And this all comes down to who owns the children. And as I've blogged about before, more and more government, especially government teachers, believe they are the ones who are responsible for the children. And as a close family friend said, uh, that's in special ed classes right now for teaching, they are being taught not to respect and not to trust the parents. This is what's being taught in the teachers' schools. All right, let's not get too far. So, no. well, this is Six all part of what's called democratic socialism. Somebody went on, and one of these Bernie Sanders folks went on and lectured us about democratic socialism and how it isn't what we think it is. Mm -hmm. Well, democratic socialism literally is, by definition, it's the Soviet economic model. It's the Soviet economic system but you get to vote you get a ballot well what a lot of these folks don't remember is in the soviet union russians did have the right to vote but you only had one party the communist party and in a lot of these safe democratic districts you only get what the party officials give you which are closet communists and socialists they never admit to being that but essentially you're getting the soviet system soviet style urban planning state-run uh, rail monopolies, state-run transit, you know, government-run schools, choose they want from, everything. Choose from any of these three approved socialist candidates. <laughs> and Bernie Sanders said something. I think we all understood what he was saying. But what he said was, why do we have a choice of 23 different deodorants when you have children going hungry in this country? Yep. Why do you have children going hungry in this country at all? 50 years of big government and the welfare warfare state, and you've still got children going hungry. In fact, we have the highest child poverty rates that we've ever had at least since the Great Depression. So obviously gov big government is not working. Let's go back to what we had before. That's just my two cents. Um, House Bill 449. No child support for a child over 18 pursuing a GED. So right now, if you're paying child support, you pay child support till they're 18, unless they're still in high school and then you just you pay until they graduate. Uh, great wonderful day and then when they graduate you find out that you're not the biological father and you're not getting any of your money back um, but that's a, that's a separate issue that we need to jump into hopefully this year as we're putting bills together um, but if they're pursuing a GED um, frequently that means they've dropped out then they wait till they're 18 then they start pursuing a GED well why is it after someone is 18 why are parents having to continue to pay child support so most of the time it's men, but more and more often we're finding that it's the women. When you have a uh, separation of parents, the, the, uh, the parents separate. If the father is a lawyer or he's politically well-connected or he goes to the same country club as the judge, 
frequently the judge acting in quote unquote the child's best interest we're finding more and more mothers are, ha are losing primary custody of their kids and having to pay child support to the father and sometimes the father makes more money than she does and yet you, you have this incredible incredibly bad system that doesn't work for the best interests of the kids at all it works for the best interests of whoever spends more money on their lawyers <coughs> but uh, again her her arguments her arguments are really poor she um, essentially argued that um, that GED programs were vitally important and that child support losing child support or having child support orders end would somehow compromise the GED and high set um, and it makes absolutely no sense one has nothing to do with the other it's just it's just forcing a few more years of child support out of someone who has been struggling with child support payments for you know possibly almost two decades so that's another bill that sailed through and we're wondering why this one is coming back and the reasoning again is 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 just absurd house bill 550 that was known as the planet fitness bill New Hampshire is unique among states. Apparently, we're the only state in the nation that penalizes companies for doing an initial public offering, which is part of their growth phase. Uh, we talk about small businesses and how they grow and create jobs. Well, at some point, if they, they're creating enough jobs, they hit a point where they need to raise even more money. They're profitable, and they need to do an initial public offering. Well, when you go public like this and offer shares, there's a huge tax penalty in New Hampshire, and we're trying to undo this. Um, Hassan is arguing that she's vetoing this but she'll consider this as part of the overall budget package. She's th thinking that vetoing this bill will help give her more negotiating room with the business tax cuts um, in, uh, in budget negotiations. Now Hassan is negotiating with Jasper and Chuck Morris but those people aren't talking to us. I don't know if Chuck Morris is talking to the Senate, but Jasper certainly hasn't sent any communications out to us. We have no idea what they're negotiating. We're reading about it through the press. So hopefully he's not expecting members of the House to actually vote for whatever it is he's haggling out with uh, Hassan because it's, it's getting less and less likely that anything is going to pass. If you don't involve actual legislators, then legislators don't vote for the deal that you come up with. And I hope that's true. It's not a deal if nobody's on board. Or reads the bill. <laughs> if you don't even notify us, <laughs> you, this is just something that's going to come out of the blue without any notice. And then he's going to stand up there saying, you know, I gave you all this notice. Well, he has his own caucus with his own, whatever it is, 50 or 60 chairs and vice chairs and people he controls. And some of the rhinos, they've got the rhino caucus on Wednesday mornings. <laughs> rhino and, caucus. Well, it is. We're going to take a break. Oh, oh, sorry. So we'll be right back. We'll cover the other three bills and get some thoughts on what they're going to pass and what they're not going to pass. And we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Rich Gerard, host of Dread at Large in the Morning. The Manchester area's only locally owned, locally operated, focused, and interested, riveting radio show heard live every Monday through Friday from 6 to 9 on 90.7 FM WLMW, New Hampshire Family Radio, and available 24-7 live or archived at GerardAtLarge.com. Be sure to tune in. We are back. Why is that unfortunately we're back? Talking while we're on break. We always do that. Um, Rock Talk. Steve McDonald, Skip Murphy, Mike Rogers. Our guest is Max Abramson. We're talking about veto override day legislation. And the governor's reasons for vetoing the legislation, and uh, our reasons for wanting to unveto it. So, uh, what's next? Oh, one last point on HB B House Bill 550, which is just again allowing New Hampshire businesses to do what every other business in the country could do: have an initial public offering without a huge tax penalty. And what Hassan says is that the impact of this will impact future budgets without addressing how New Hampshire will pay for it. And she says that cutting taxes without offsetting the loss in revenue will jeopardize our state's ability to invest in the priorities that are critical to our state's families, business, and our future in the 21st century innovation economy. 
I love how she just strings all these new political buzz phrases and buzzwords together that one thing has nothing to do with the other. I wonder what's you know. I wonder what's going on through her mind. Is it just well, she thinks, all these? She thinks the innovation economy is exclusively powered by government. You know, my response is, uh, you want to balance the budget? How about cutting out some of your political hacks, bozo, and let the uh, private economy grow instead? She wanted to innovate by adding a, a new was one point five million dollar office for a chief chief operating officer to do. Her essentially, the, the governor's job while she flies around the world. So we suggested a, an efficient. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just seeing that Haggy Masan mm-hmm. sign. <laughs> we suggested an efficiency improvement by just getting rid of that. It was so ridiculous. And the public's response to that was, "Why do you need to spend one and a half million dollars on a whole new government office to do the job of the governor just so the governor can go around?" the country doing fundraisers for her senate campaign and whatnot she hasn't even announced that she's running i guess with the whole uh (laughs) i've creased him up sorry uh he mentioned haggy masan so i i showed him my picture of the progressive nurse ratchet haggy (laughs) masan there you go (laughs) as as seen on granite rock a few days ago Sorry, okay. Max. Okay. <laughs> so okay. House Bill 603, which is the one that I'm speaking on this Wednesday on the floor, uh, very briefly. 603? It simply allows, it recognizes a right that we already have, parents already have, which is to opt out of these federal assessments. Well, the, these federal assessments are being sco- sold as skills tests. They are not skills tests tests of any sort. It's an airport in here today. Sorry, there was something in the trash and we walked in and it was like, zzz, so I had to take the trash out. But some of the little critters remained. Yeah, it isn't a skills test It's at not all. a skills test. It is a test asking students their opinions, attitudes, and beliefs and tracking those opinions, attitudes, and beliefs every year to make sure that they're pushing the whole big to government sure indoctrination. To proper little socialists. You know, the little history behind public schooling. The reason, real reason we switched between World War I and World War II from private schooling to public schooling was not, as some people say, to help give orphans access to education. They were already going to public schools. They changed from private schooling to public schooling in order to produce reliable factory workers who wouldn't raise questions, wouldn't organize, wouldn't stand up for their rights, wouldn't stand up to the system, and they would just go along and get along with the whole system without questioning everything. Well, except you say wouldn't organize, but the output of most of the uh, education system these days is people conditioned to uh, to the acceptance of government unions. Right, but government unions, you know, by the 1940s and 50s, um, even you know, even to the 1960s, no one believed in the idea of government unions. No. It, they, they just started organizing in the 19, you know, late 60s and 70s. And it really was just, as, as far as I can see, it's just an accounting gimmick. I don't see very many real unions. Uh, I'm a union man myself. I don't see any real unions in the public sector. Certainly not the teachers' unions. They don't work for the teachers. They just they just come at you with this left-wing message that they push down on teachers, they push the down whole, on state the, employees. The whole purpose of a union is for rent-seeking, to acquire more wealth for a few at the expense of the many, especially the few at the very top, the union bosses. <clears throat> and that's all it comes down to. We want more money than what the ordinary economic system, free market, would give us. And that's all it's about. Unfortunately now, especially with the government unions, they've become much more of a, a, a political force with all that money so that we see... Uh, basically the tyranny of the minority. Go ahead. Let's go back to California again like we've been doing all day. Private no sector politi- unions. No politician can do much nowadays with, by having the unions oppose them. In private sector unions organize against the company. Public sector unions organize against the taxpayers. And that is why the taxpayers are being hurt. Now, companies that haven't unionized, especially small businesses, are being hit with a double whammy of taxes because they get hit with some of the highest business taxes in the country from the state. Then these small business owners get hit again with the highest property taxes in the country. And you get hit twice again because they own a shop and they own their own home and they're paying the highest property taxes anywhere. So it's the public sector unions. Um, 
about 80% of all state and local spending is, you know, it's not construction and whatnot. It's not fixing the freeways. It's public employee pay and benefits. And most of that is going to the top at the federal level. We have 15 layers, G1 through G15. 40% of the federal workforce is G10 or higher. So it's not even a pyramid. It's more like just a, it's the leaning tower of Pisa. You know, it doesn't taper off at the top. It actually gets a little bit wider at the top. There are more people at the top. And so you have all these supervisors and deputy supervisors and managers and administrators and commissioners and so forth at the top. You have people sitting at a desk talking like we are now, but they're getting paid over 120000 a year and some of them over $200,000 a year, plus Cadillac plans and whatnot, medical plans and generous pension plans. Mm -hmm. And there are too many chiefs and not enough Indians. They're wait, literally wait, 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 wait. That's politically incorrect. <laughs> really? <laughs> Screw political correctness. Proceed. Yeah. Yes, please, please do. So here's what she says about vetoing House Bill 603. She said, if passed, House Bill 603 would discourage participation in the annual statewide assessment, violating the requirements of both federal and state law. Wrong. There's no federal law. And there's no state law that says that you have to take these. This is in response to an erroneous uh, technical memo that came down from the, Depart from the Department of State Department of Education telling schools that you couldn't allow uh, parents to opt out and that they should be discouraged and frowned upon and, 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 and just not allowed. So now you have parents telling their kids, well, if they, if they you know, half the kids and uh, half the parents in... Uh, Manchester and Nashua have out opted out. New York State, they explicitly by law allow kids to opt out. They, are, they allow parents to opt their kids out of these, you know, value-based assessments or whatever you want to call them. Checking these kids' opinions, political opinions. Opinion of, surveys. Of, of a nine-year-old. I know what my political opinions were when I was nine years old. Um, it has absolutely nothing to do with schooling. It was bedtime politics, um, what you could eat for lunch or dinner politics. You know. What should get blown up, pyrotechnics, <laughs> you know, things that have nothing to do with, with anything. And yet that's what they're polling, spending an entire day out of 180 days. One teacher said 27 days a year are eaten up by all these different tests. So was that leave you 153 days left? And the tests are getting worse and worse and worse and more numerous. And there are more and more standardized tests. How many standardized tests do you need? Um, says that it poses a significant fiscal risk by threatening tens of millions of dollars a year in federal funding because you have to have 95% participation. But where you don't have 95 is the federal government really going to pull funding? They don't do it in New York. They're not doing it in Manchester. They're not pulling anyone's funding. It's, it's just a ridiculous thing. If I that understand they it correctly, they've never pulled anyone's funding for that. New Hampshire's economic competitiveness, this is what she says, depends on our ongoing commitment to ensuring that our students and workers have the skills needed to compete in the future. Apparently as pollsters. As pollsters. <laughs> yeah. Receiving polls, taking polls, but you can take plenty of online polls asking about your opinion. I mean, we can poll nine-year-olds on Facebook. <laughs> You know, all the newspapers. Actually, you're not supposed to be able to pull them. They have to be at least 13. Oh. That doesn't mean there aren't nine-year-olds saying they're 13. Yeah, but, uh, but newspapers, all the online newspapers have a poll on the front page because they find that it boosts readership. People like a having their opinion you know, being asked what their opinion is on something. Yes, um, they do. I've received, and we've all received, more emails and more contacts on House Bill 603 than probably any other bill this year. I've had probably about two, maybe 300 emails just on this one issue, you know. And to see, you know, we're hoping to pick up about 20, 30 Democrats needed to override Hassan's veto. But just to see, the Democrats aren't even responding. They're not responding to any messages. All the people I've talked to have said, well, we've gotten a few Republicans respond to our emails and our messages and we're getting no response from the Democrats. So it's almost like they're locking their members down again and saying, you know, you've got to vote vote against this and stick with the party line and <coughs> and I don't know why would you even run why why do people even run as Democrats if you just have to do what Steve Shirtliff tells you to do? They don't have any independence or flexibility at all. Well it comes back to what Debbie Wasserman Schultz, the head of the DNC, <coughs> Congress 
twit from uh, Florida, has basically when asked three times now, what's the difference between a Democrat and a socialist? And she cannot or will not answer the uh, question. And you all know what socialism is. It is government controlling everything. And if they could own it, they'd do it. I don't think this will... I, my honest opinion about all these bills, the budget deal, everything, I don't think, even if you get an override in the House, I don't think it's going to get through the Senate. I just don't see it happening. We've already got weak-kneed Republicans in the Senate. The Democrats Styles is an example. The <laughs> Democrats, I just don't see the Democrats going, oh, okay, we're going to just ignore our decision about the narrative with regard to these education issues or whatever. And I just don't see it working. But bringing them up, Having a discussion, making it public, letting people know, that's important. People and are paying attention to this one. There are going to be a lot of people watching the debate on on these bills. Um, but in response to, to what you said, Democratic Party is not about, you know, nowadays isn't about social justice or social democracy. They're not cutting taxes on the working poor. Even They've gone further to the left even than the Green Party. The Green Party is a legitimate political party. Democratic Party is not a legitimate political party. What they're pushing is democratic socialism. They are pushing Soviet-style urban planning, Soviet-style controls, government control of schools, government control of health care. They want government control of everything because they are the government. They are the bureaucratic party. They're not pro-labor. They're not pro-worker. They don't care about blue-collar folks. They're the government first party. That's what I call them. Which They is, are the government is, party. They are the lawyer party. Which is why government unions are so pernicious, because you set up these huge bureaucracies with unionized bureaucrats in them that then uh, pump money right back around into keeping themselves in power. Is there a vote on the budget? I mean, are there gonna tr- is there any way to v- override a veto on the budget, or are they just going to renegotiate the terms and, and pr- pr- put that before the legislators? Well, we're still discussing whether or not we're going to support Essentially, the Jasper budget gives the Democrats 95% of what they mm-hmm. were Correct. demanding Correct. every time they give them every time they gave them everything they wanted. Revenue numbers would go up a little bit more, and the Democrats would walk away from the table and say, "Well, we want more." Then they would Jasper and those guys would give them everything that they wanted, and then revenue figures would go up again, and they'd walk away and say, "We want even more." And they just keep going through this cycle, giving them more and more and more. And now Jasper is telling us, and Hassan seems to be indicating that they're sitting down in secret in these secret meetings that they're not publicizing or telling them about oh that they've already come to an agreement that they're going to give the the last 5% that they're going to give the state employees who've already had three rate pay raises in the last 3 years that we couldn't afford but now they're going to give them a fourth pay raise oh. after all and then medicaid expansion which is the the absolute last of those things is going to be put off till next year and they've been so dishonest and so sneaky about about how they're doing it. And when you actually read the Medicaid expansion bill, they say, oh, yeah, when the feds cut it off, we'll, we'll cut it off, and that'll be the end of the program. No, that isn't true. If you read it, the, the way that it's worded, the message comes from the federal government to some state official who then transmits a message to another official who transmits a message to the governor who then says that she's received a message saying that it's all been cut off, and and then the program ends. Well, why doesn't the program end at the the day that the feds cut off the funding <clears throat> for it? I don't know. We're out of time. We'll be left with a state sales tax if we don't. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what they want. That is absolutely what they want. Well, Max, thank you so much for coming down and talking to us about this. We're going to talk to Shona Holmes next, the Canadian healthcare refugee. You are, of course, always welcome to stick around and uh, spend some time as we talk to the rest of our guests. Rich Gerard's coming in studio for the 1030 segment. We're going to talk about his race in Manchester. And uh, that's it for this segment of Grok Talk. We'll be back in about five minutes with Shona Holmes. Please stick around. Don't go away. We're not leaving. I'm just wasting time till I get to the right time so that I can push the little button and everything works right. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm Steve McDonald here with Skip Murphy, Mike Rogers, and Max Abramson. We'll be right back. Grok Talk comes to you live almost every Saturday morning from 9 to 11 a.m. Eastern Time on New Hampshire's leading conservative blog site, GraniteGrok.com. You can also listen live at Spreaker.com. If you missed a live show, catch up with the podcast at GraniteGrok.com, Spreaker.com, on Stitcher Radio, at iTunes, TuneIn, or iHeartRadio, and now on The Rock, New Hampshire's Christian radio station, The Rock and HCR.com. Rock Talk is a mobile ready broadcast, so you can listen anywhere, anytime, on your PC, laptop, tablet, or smartphone. Rock Talk. Uh-huh. <laughs>
<laughs> feel the power. Oh, I can feel it. Now a moment of triumph approaches. <laughs> The Coalition of New Hampshire Taxpayers. We're located at 8 North Main in Concord, New Hampshire. This is a repository for all things conservative and municipal. So if you have a problem in your town, your school, your budget committee, the right to know law, and now at the top of our list is voter fraud. you have a tip for us, some information for us, you want to join or help us out, cnht.org. TV.